What are the stereotypes of the 1%? Entitled. Selfish. Me, me, me. White. They don't play by the rules. Not thinking about others that may have come from a different side of the track. The 1%, as you well know, is overwhelmingly white. We're talking about the top tier of Americans who have and own a majority of the nation's wealth. These are people who are uber rich. There are a few African Americans who have made it to that tier. Uh, but compared to the number of whites in the 1%, they are literally a percent of the 1%. So why is the 1% so white? It has to do with something called the racial wealth gap. For every dollar of wealth held by the typical white household, the typical African-American household owns only six cents of wealth. Six cents, you heard right. So how did we get here? When you think about wealth, you have to understand that it's generational, that wealth left over generations actually compounds and builds and grows. African Americans were held as slaves and they weren't allowed to earn any income. They weren't allowed to own things at one point in this history, and that actually has contemporary effects. Effects Eddie Brown knew all too well, but was able to overcome. Then we bought the building next door, because we're since we didn't do that, we bought this. And then, just a September ago, we bought the next one, too. So Brown Capital is basically all three townhouses. Today, Eddie is the CEO of Brown Capital, a firm with over $8 billion in assets under management. Along with his wife, Sylvia, the Browns are hoteliers, patrons of the Black Arts, and philanthropists. Eddie and Sylvia Brown led the way towards making this building a reality, one of the largest gifts from an African-American family in this nation's history. So you were born to a teenage mother in the Jim Crow South, on the wrong side of the track. On the wrong side of the track, which means, as they say down south, dirt poor. But there's another concept, though, that people say, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. This is America. You know, our pastor, used to say, people make that statement, what they don't realize is many people don't have boots. So <laughs> you got to help get the, get the boots. Then maybe they can lift themselves up. Is there an obligation, particularly in communities of color, to give back? I feel very strongly that there should be. I mean, how did they get there? <laughs> Surely a lot of it was talent but somebody had to look out for them and help them along the way. Despite their success, the Browns have still faced certain barriers to wealth creation. Home ownership is one of the pillars of wealth, and blacks continue to face discrimination in the housing market. You know, we've sold a couple of homes over the years, and I remember the realtor said, uh, let's take down photos so one seeing the home that's white won't recognize it as being a black homeowner. And I was just shocked. We were shocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said family photos around, they all should come down if you want to get a sale, uh, well, a good price. So I'll take you into the library now. It's one of my favorite rooms. Even education hasn't leveled the playing field. Today, blacks with a bachelor's degree have less than half the wealth of whites who didn't graduate from college. I had two wonderful parents. They really strived for excellence. Now, my father was a neurosurgeon, and at the time, there were only 11 in the country. He could not practice in white hospitals. He was turned down time after time. They would not say it was a race issue, but we knew. Sheila Johnson became one of the highest net worth black women in the United States with the help of a game-changing television network, BET. She helped build BET from two hours of programming a week to a major network worth $2.3 billion by the time it was sold to Viacom in 2001. 
So you are one of the, I would imagine, few black women to own a property like this. Probably. You know, I don't know. You feel? I'm proud. Yeah. I'm very proud. Is this more fun than BET? Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, because I'm in total control. <laughs> and it took me 10 years to get approvals. Wow, that seems like a particularly long time. It, it, it was, it's a story that I think as an African American, they did not want me mm. to do this. And it was the fight of my life. I've never been more frightened in my life. Despite the pedigree that you have, despite... They didn't care. They didn't care. If you are a person of color, you can have as much money as you want. You're still who you are. And that was a lesson I really learned. But there is a loneliness that very wealthy African Americans do feel in their lives. When it all comes down to it, there are very few people in that category. How do we diversify the 1%. I think it's really incumbent upon us who have achieved some modicum of success to make it our business to mentor and to uplift. There is no reason why we shouldn't have more people of color uh, in the 1% showing that, you know, that their talent can be reflected in terms of financial well-being. The data actually shows that people of color who are in job creating positions hire more people of color. It's about power. If you have the money, you, through society, you gain power. People start to notice you. Use that power appropriately. Reach out and feel secure within yourselves to be able to go out and help others. And that's the only way we're gonna get stronger.